Guys, check this out. This is fucking crazy. woke up guys and there's literally animals right now coming out of the grass coming into this area much closer to the lodge and there's a massive buffalo chilling like right there so check this out if you actually go outside this way you got this bath and then it literally leads right out onto the, the bush. Step over this, boom. You are in the national park and that buffalo just around the corner there. They literally told us last night that lions sometimes come around this area, sit on the rocks over there, right by the lodge. So there could be anything right here. So buffalo are one of the big five, which basically means that they are one of the top five most dangerous animals in the African savannah. So I think this is probably about as close as I'm willing to get just on foot. Living amongst the animals in this wilderness called Kadepo felt both comforting and electrifying. too soon before it was time to move on to the next natural park. So right now, we have a six to nine, ten hour journey. <laughs> African time. Yeah. African time, yeah. And uh, it's another big day on the road. Let's do it. Hakawa, we are turning back to Gulo and going down, I think, so just near the ferry. So. Even just stepping a few meters away from the car park, there was life everywhere. Just about to leave in the car, and I found this whole family of monkeys. And all these water bucks over here, surrounded by animals right now. Are we ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. And this abundance of life was everywhere you turned. In small river tracts, there were many species of birds fishing. On the grasslands, there were waterbuck and antelope. In the mud pools on the side of the path were more buffalo cooling off in the morning sun. And as we drove further away from Kadepo, we came across more local people whose lives were very different to ours. Hello! They're a little bit shy, they kind of ran away from us as we stopped. My name is Thomas. Yeah. My name is Ada Will. Yes. Yeah. Do you want a picture? Yes. Okay. There you go. This is my friend Sasha. Sasha? Thomas. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We are going to the mountain to collect firewood. Ah, okay. A lot of firewood. Nice. Yes. Nice to meet you.
after a long, long drive, we came into Murchison Falls, where we had to wait for a ferry to cross the river. In the port, there were still more wild animals. Huge birds here. So if you guys can see how big that actually is, its head would probably come up to my chest. I'm a little bit high. Loads of these pumbas here, and this one right in front of me now. These big baboons right here. So if a lightning hits us, we are totally done. As we crossed, a storm came overhead. We're right now on the River Nile. Back in the truck now. Hopefully only a few minutes until I lodge. And we had finally arrived. I really like your umbrellas, guys. <laughs> You've got half an umbrella there, man. <laughs> Water on your lens. And you say water on his lens, yeah? Uh, we should do a picture, a group picture with that. By the time we finally arrived, it was getting late, with another early start the next morning. All right, guys, we just woke up, 6 a.m. We're now going to do the game drive in Murchison Falls National Park. I'm super excited about this one because on the way here we saw tons of animals. We saw like loads of giraffes and yeah, sunrise again. It's gonna be a nice light. Let's see. As we crossed the river again for the second time, the stormy sky had been replaced with a golden light and the waters were perfectly calm. Baboon just got a bit aggressive and stole an empty lunch bag. I don't think he's too happy with that success, but he does seem quite excited. Are we ready, Oma? Yeah, more than ready, man. More than ready? Yeah. We immediately saw that Murchison Falls was different to Kadepo. With the River Nile running right through it, it was greener. There were more trees, more hills, more animals, more everything.
huge elephant right in front of us. It was here where I first saw elephants close up and in daylight. And they were even bigger than I thought. stop now to stretch out and right on the river Nile there we can see three or four hippos We've moved into Baker's Lodge now, after that safari, and another ridiculous place. This is the coolest thing though, check this out. So I sit on my, on my little terrace here, and right from where I'm sitting, I'm right on the river and you can just see hippos, literally just there. Just lodge after lodge, isn't it? We are a group of lucky guys. We're gonna have a nice lunch here, relax a little bit, and then we're gonna be going to a boat safari all along this river here, which is the River Nile. We've got some salted African bread. It's not really African bread, it's just bread from Africa, right? It's bread in Africa. Yeah. The river drive was much more relaxed and open to being in the car. We had a full view of the animals and some things I just had to watch with my eyes rather than through my lens. Whoa, it's a These are the little warm-up. We're now changing to a proper tour boat and we'll let everything begin from here. What's up, gangster? <laughs> you enjoying your beer? Enjoying my tangawizi. Tangawizi. Yeah. I'm searching for Wi-Fi. Of course you are. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing why I'm here in Uganda. Where's Wi-Fi? <laughs> Sasha told me that here, here you have everywhere Wi-Fi, but uh, he's a liar. He's a big liar, and he's red as. F <laughs> sorry, sorry, I, I, I <laughs> sorry. We 
just arrived across a huge, what would you call it, a herd, a family of buffalo. A herd of buffalo. And they're acting pretty kind of defensive just because there's two boats here. They're all kind of uh, a, little bit, a little bit nervous. Bushes here, you can see a huge crocodile. You can just see his tail and uh, the sun and the shade there. It doesn't look like it's moving, it looks like it's dead to be honest. <laughs> it's not a dog, right? <laughs> As we went further and further up the river, we came across the reason the area is called Murchison Falls. A huge waterfall, 43 meters high, that sends 300 cubic meters of water per second through just a seven meter gap. It was time to hike. So the, all the things one, that you don't need? Do you need this one on the boat? Or? So we just got off the boat. Now we're on our way right up to the top of Murchison Falls. The baboon Thomas. Why, Thomas? How are you? Why did you do that? I'm good, man. How are you nice doing? He's the king of the baboons. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, man. Amazing place, right? Wow. So you've been to these waterfalls a million times, right? Yeah, some couple of times. Yeah, some three years. For three years you've been coming here. Yeah. It's cool, man. So you're the first time. Yeah, first time for me. Right, where are you? Are you from Uganda? Yeah. Okay. You grew up around this area? No, no, not around this area. It's uh, north. North, okay. North is hot, right? Yeah. Better down here. <laughs> yeah. It felt like one of the longest days of the entire trip. But even as we came back to our lodge, there was more in store. Man, the light is beautiful right here. Where we're staying is just ridiculous. Like, literally. 
fucking massive hippo right there. Like massive hippo right there. Amazing having nature this close. To be in, in a lodge, have a room literally 20 meters away from a family of hippos, big animals. And although these animals, like hippos, are supposed to be one of the most dangerous animals in the world, they're actually quite comforting in a way. I feel like if I was just here alone, they would keep me company. A nice big family of hippos making their grunting noises in the river. There's something strange about seeing big animals as well. Like today, all of the big animals we saw, giraffes, elephants, hippos, crocodiles, even lions the other day. It's like, I'm so not used to it. I'm so used to seeing even like big, vast landscapes, amazing nature, but I'm never used to actually just seeing like big animals in the wild. There's something about it that's, as weird as it sounds, it almost seems as they don't belong there. Like it, they, they belong in some cartoon or something. And it's crazy to think that this is how the world should be. Everywhere should have these, these big animals that are so vital to our ecosystems. And uh, it's crazy coming here where they're in abundance. It really makes you realize how out of touch we are with them, or at least how out of touch I am with them. Guys, check this out, this is fucking crazy. Dude, that is so crazy. So every time we walk from our huts to the main lodge, we have to call a, a guide. And at first I thought that was kind of stupid, like we have to call a guide to walk us like 50 meters to the main lodge. But now I know exactly why. Man, this is literally nuts. So if we want to see them at all, we have to move really, really fast. So right now we're heading towards a group of males that were that were fighing. Not sure if this is a good idea. 